stars for this year's Academy Awards. Find out what's behind an Oscar campaign and how that gold statue got its name. We'll go backstage with the director of the show, hear the stars predict this year's winners, and look back at a legend who will receive a very special Academy Award. Good evening, I'm Harold Green. This year's Academy Awards ceremony will mark the 55th year Oscar has been awarded. Gandhi, Tootsie, and E.T. are the big vote getters for the coveted award. In fact, Gandhi has 11 nominations, Tootsie 10, and E.T. 9. In the Best Supporting Actress category, we have Glenn Close, who played a liberated mother in the book-turned film, The World According to Garp. Next, there's Terry Garr, who is Dustin Hoffman's neurotic girlfriend in Tootsie. From the same film, the other woman in Dustin Hoffman's life, Jessica Lange, is also nominated. Kim Stanley and Francis, who portrayed the mother obsessed with her daughter's stardom. And veteran actress Leslie Ann Warren in a different role, that of a dizzy blonde bombshell in Victor Victoria. In the Best Supporting Actor category, the Broadway play turned film, The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, sees Charles Durning dancing his way to a nomination. Lou Gossett Jr. in a powerful performance from An Officer and a Gentleman. Next, John Lithgow portrays a transsexual in The World According to Garp. From the verdict, James Mason delivers his portrayal of an overzealous prosecuting attorney. And Robert Preston from The Music Man to The Music Manager of Julie Andrews in Victor Victoria. For best achievement in directing, first we have the saga of Men at Sea. Wolfgang Peterson brings us Das Boot. E.T., The Extraterrestrial, the highest grossing film in history, brings Steven Spielberg a nomination. Richard Attenborough, already the winner of a Golden Globe and Directors Guild Award for Gandhi, is also nominated for this year's Oscar. Sidney Pollack finds himself in front of the camera as well as directing in Tootsie. And in the verdict, Sidney Lumet brings us the brilliant account of a down-and-out attorney. Every year, the Best Actor category brings out a wealth of Hollywood talent, this year's race for the Best Actor Award gives us Dustin Hoffman, who becomes a leading lady and learns a lot about women in Tootsie. I mean, if I didn't love Julie before, you should have seen a look on her face when she thought I was a lesbian. Lesbian? You just said gay. No, 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 no. Sandy thinks I'm gay. Julie thinks I'm a lesbian. I thought Dorothy was supposed to be straight. Dorothy is straight. Les, the sweetest, nicest man in the world tonight, asked me to marry him. A guy named Les wants you to marry him? You? Yeah, no, not Matt. No, he wants to marry Dorothy. Does he know she's a lesbian? Dorothy's not a lesbian! I know that, but does he know Ben that? Kingsley, who almost embodies Mahatma Gandhi in the movie Gandhi. Because 100,000 Englishmen simply cannot control 350 million Indians if those Indians refuse to cooperate. And that is what we intend to achieve. Peaceful, non-violent, non-cooperation. Till you yourself see the wisdom of leaving. And Jack Lemon, a father determined to find his son in Missing. You have all the connections. I'm a middle-aged businessman from New York City. I don't speak one word of Spanish. Here I am. My son may have been shot. Maybe he was tortured. Maybe he was... Oh, Lord, beaten so badly that they're keeping him until he's well enough to be released. I don't know. I don't care. Five-time Oscar nominee Paul Newman portrays a powerful role of a lost attorney finding himself in The Verdict. I'm going up there. I'm going to try it. I'm going to let the jury decide. You know, they told me about you. Said you're a hard-ass. You're a defendant's judge. No, I don't care. I said to hell with it. To hell with it. Peter O'Toole in the role of a veteran film star who's afraid of a new thing called live television in My Favorite Year. What is our estimated time of arrival? Go ahead and lash me, you swine. You'll not loosen my tongue. This year's Best Actress category has three veteran nominees and two first-timers. First, we have Julie Andrews, who goes from rags to riches, playing a man impersonating a woman in Victor Victoria.
And for the first time in 40 years, an actress is nominated in two different categories. Jessica Lange, also nominated for Best Supporting Actress in Tootsie, finds herself nominated for Best Actress in Francis. There is one thing that you cannot pretend anymore, and that is that I love you, because I don't. I can't. Not after what you've done to me. Sissy Spacek receives her second nomination in three years, winning in 1980 for Coal Miner's Daughter. This year, her role of a concerned and driven wife in Missing brings her a nomination. He's been gone two weeks. And I don't know, they give me the same song and dance over and over again. He could be hurt or tortured. They don't give a goddamn about him. Meryl Streep, another veteran of Oscar nominations, is in the running this year for her dramatic portrayal of a German immigrant in Sophie's Choice. Yeah. When I was a little girl, I, I remember I lay in bed and I hear my mother downstairs playing the piano and the sound of my father's typewriter. And Deborah Winger, newcomer to Oscar nominations, is recognized for her performance opposite Richard Gere in An Officer and a Gentleman. So, uh, you got a girl mail the wife? Mom? I've been looking for one of you. What are you looking for? The best picture of the year category is a tough one this year. E.T., the extraterrestrial. Gandhi. Missing. Tootsie. The verdict. Every year, Hollywood comes alive with an all-out commercial blitz for the Academy Award. We'll show you that and some winning predictions when we return. I'll have the purses. And a merchandising phenomenon. Now, there's only one thing left, the Academy Awards. Tonight, put your eye on E.T. and Oscar, a special half hour of Eye on L.A. at 7.30 on Channel 7. No doubt about it, the Academy Awards ceremony is one of the world's most watched events. The commercial buildup that happens between December and April in pursuit of that eight-and-a-half-pound statue is phenomenal. Hollywood comes alive in pursuit of the coveted Academy Award given out by the Motion Picture Academy of Arts and Sciences. What is the Academy? Who gets to vote? And how do you join this organization? Well, we dropped in on the president of the Academy, Faye Kanan, to find out. You are proposed for membership to the Academy by uh, two members in your in your specialization, two actors would propose an actor, two writers, a writer. We screen all the no films that represent any nominated achievement in our theater here two times. Then you vote across the board. Your ballots are sent to you. Nobody knows how you vote. And I, as president, don't know the winning people until that night, like everybody else when I hear it. The build-up to a nomination can be all-encompassing. The Academy members are blitzed with pictures of stars on the cover of major magazines, screenings on subscription television, and for your consideration ads in the trade publications. I think that the ads mostly serve uh, at the beginning to remind them of certain achievements in films. After that, I don't think anyone's going to vote because somebody had the most ads. As a matter of fact, they might sometimes uh, get their backs up. Early indicators of Academy Award winners is said to begin with the Directors Guild Award, followed by the Golden Globe Award ceremony held by the Hollywood Foreign Press every year. It's with the Golden Globes that the heavy predictions begin. I hope that everybody gets nominated from the picture. I think they all deserve it. I think Dustin Hoffman's performance in Tootsie was astounding. Missing. Gandhi. Gandhi. Gandhi has to win because that was summer's thing to achieve what he achieved, but the actor is gorgeous. I don't think 
that I'm going to vote the way the New York film critics vote or the way the Golden Globes vote, or I'm going to count, oh boy, this fella won three now. He's really something to reckon with, or this lady. I am going to make up my own mind. I think all of us like to think that we make up our own minds. During the Oscar buildup, everybody has to be seen, and everybody has a favorite pick. Meryl Streep. She's way on top. I'd say uh, Dustin Hoffman. We're on our way to see Gandhi right now. E.T. I sure like the verdict a lot. I like Paul Newman to win, but Ben Kingsley, I think, you know, off distances. Yeah. I want Dustin Hoffman to win Best Actor. I uh, hear Gandhi. Gandhi is truly an amazing film. Well, Robert Preston, we hope, will win Best Actor. Best Supporting Actor. Best Supporting Actor. He should be Best Actor. Oscar Picks. Right. Right here, please. Favorite film. No, I'm keeping up. <laughs> we'll be back with a look behind the scenes at the director of the Academy Awards ceremony and a look at the woman who makes the statue we all know as Oscar right after this. Each year, millions of Americans sit home and watch a dazzling night at Oscar, an evening of entertainment that takes months of planning. Planning by the people who make the gold statuettes and planning by the man who brings it all together. Marty Facetta has been called the best live television director in the business. This year's 55th Academy Awards ceremony will be his 13th directorial assignment. Marty recently took time out from pre-production on the upcoming program to share some unusual behind-the-scene moments that have happened over the years. One time I had a, a singer that we couldn't find. We finally found her hidden behind scenery, pushed her out, and we got back into the thing. That's one time. One time Chuck Heston had a flat tire. He was out on the freeway. Nobody would pick him up. What's the worst thing that ever happened to you during the show? You're on the air, and here we are. We're on the air uh, live. Uh, to our viewing audience around the world, I think it's around 400 to 450 million. And I lost communications. And I'm outside in a truck, one of six to eight trucks that are outside. I'm not even in the building. And when it went dead, it went dead for over an hour because a cable had gotten cut. A piece of scenery had run over a, a, a wire and uh, it cut it. And Everything absolutely went dead. How sympathetic are you to acceptance speeches? I mean, after all, this is that person's great moment, so to speak, in life. How much time do you allot? We ask for 30 seconds. Now, 30 seconds, if it's prepared, is a long time. 30 seconds unprepared, if somebody doesn't do their homework and figure out um, what they're going to say, uh, will ramble on into three minutes of nothingness. Marty, let's talk specifics here. How many cameras are involved? It varies between 15 and 17, depending upon what the four, requirements three, are. About two, 23 one, tape boom. machines. We have a sound van. We have a, a control van, which I'm in, which is like a master control. Then there's a sub-master control with another technical director with a full switcher over there and an assistant director there. Then there's a video van, a videotape van. We have about uh, eight or nine videotape machines with us out on location. And what about the Oscar itself? The golden statue all the fuss is actually about. There's an edict that comes from me and my st to my staff and everybody, don't touch it. <laughs> That's true. And there's, a, and there's a stamped edict. I mean, you are not allowed to physically manhandle, touch. You can look in a river, but you can't touch. Touching Oscar is what Stella Nelnaldi does for a living. She's been putting Oscar together for 40 years. After so many years, you more or less say, well, Oscar will take care of itself. When you do 50 and 60 of them, you know, the excitement kind of wears off a little. Dodge Trophy started making Oscar some 50 years ago. A lot of time and skilled craftsmanship is involved. We don't rush in and just make him. One day we will pour him the mold. The next day we will, we will get him polished and buffed. We are in no hurry. We handle him with either the plastic or a cloth, which we usually will handle him with a cloth. What many people don't realize is that he's standing on a reel of film. 
Over the years, this much desired eight and a half pound fellow has found himself in some unusual places. I've heard a lot of rumors, a lot of funny stories that, that like I say, I've overheard or, or read. Um, I've, the one about the lady who threw one in the river, they found it later. There was one found in a pawn shop. Um, I've heard some wild stories. I even read in the paper just about a week ago, I read about some lady that uh, passed away and there was an Oscar in her home. There are times when people have called to, to buy an Oscar and in fact one person called to buy 70 of them. The name Oscar, from what I have read through the Academy, from what I understand, came about when the secretary of the Academy at the time, who later became the president, a lady, um, saw either the the original uh, sculpture of the Oscar or the first Oscar and said, gee, that looks like my Uncle Oscar. A newspaper man overheard this and started using that word Oscar, 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 and it became the name. Everyone started using it. Since about 20 years ago, we're serializing the Oscar. In fact, this here is number 2080. And uh, who's going to get 2080? Only Price Waterhouse knows who's going to get number 2080, but we know Mickey Rooney has come a long way from this miniature Oscar he won in 1938 to the 1983 Governor's Award that he'll receive at this year's ceremony. We'll look back at Mickey Rooney's legendary career when we return. A Motion Picture Academy Award is a very special one. Actor Mickey Rooney will soon have the distinction of having two. One, a miniature award given him in 1938 for recognition as a child actor. And soon, a full-size one that Bob Hope will present to Rooney on Monday night for 60 years of memorable achievement in film. Judy, when I spend a dime on myself for some little luxury like this, I always think about those unfortunate kids. How far just a dime will go toward helping Gee, Mickey, we don't know how lucky we are and how much we have to be thankful for with our health and our happiness. Judy, and that's why we should do all that we can to help all of those who can't help themselves. I know. Can I put a dime in your envelope? Oh, you know that you can. And that's what every good American should do. Join the March of Dimes. My name is Mickey Rooney, and if there's one thing I'm going to do before my life is over, I'm going to try harder. Mickey Rooney has been trying hard ever since he was two and a half years old and known by his real name, Joe Yule Jr. While he was still in short pants, the studios changed his name to Mickey McGuire. It was with the Mickey McGuire films that a young Mickey started to make a living. Later, there would be another studio and yet another name change from Mickey McGuire to Mickey Rooney. The name stuck. Mickey Rooney soon met Louis B. Mayer, head of the MGM movie-making machine. It was Mr. Mayer who introduced Mr. Rooney to Andy Hardy, and the rest is film history. Andy Hardy was a young American pie wholesome kind of guy that would bring Mickey Rooney film stardom. See, when I was at Metro Golden Mayer, I thought that, that every day was because I thought they just loved each other. After L.B. Mayer passed away, there were all these vicious stories about how awful he was. He wasn't that way at all. They ran their businesses like gentlemen and adamantly as real executives. They built the business. Andy Hardy was a phenomenon for the MGM film factory that prided itself on cranking out one motion picture a week. From 1937 to 1940, during the early Hardy run, Mickey Rooney was the biggest box office draw in the country. In 1946, the last Andy Hardy picture was made, Love Laughs at Andy Hardy. After Andy Hardy, the career began to change for Mickey, but it was the all-American Andy Hardy image that will be best remembered. As his career progressed, he worked consistently while providing screen images that will remain in America's heart forever. All right, Whitey, let's have it. What? The whole story. Nothing to tell. Stop that. They found your cap near the bank, and they followed your trail to the church where I found you. Why don't you leave me alone? If I hadn't got there first, you'd be in jail now. Right, but Mickey Rooney is going to accept. Popularity continued through the 50s and 60s, making Mickey a much sought-after and highly visible Hollywood personality. Who wants to be tall? Andy Hardy goes to college. 
Mickey Rooney continues his long distance race as an actor, winning critical acclaim for his recent television performance in Bill. Bill, I think you made a mistake. I'm sorry, ma'am. I thought you were somebody else. In 1980, his performance in Black Stallion brought him an Academy nomination for Best Supporting Actor. Alec, that black is a desert horse. He's fast, all right. Sure he's fast. He hasn't got any papers. Fast or not, I don't think they'd ever let him run. I think this is the greatest business in the world. And I got news for you, if I had to work in it for a dollar, I'd work because I'd die if I couldn't work in it. I think anybody that works in, mo in motion pictures or in show business are the luckiest people in the world. Congratulations, Mickey Rooney, on receiving the Motion Picture Academy's 1982 Governor's Award. That's Hollywood Close Up for now, but I'll be back Monday, starting at 5, live at the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion, for an evening with Oscar with my co-host, Tawny Little. We'll catch the stars arriving. That show begins at 6. Then we'll take you to some of the celebrity parties after the ceremony, all on Monday. Hollywood Close-Up's Big Evening with Oscar. We'll see you then. Good night.